Yeah. You know? But yeah, talk to your clerk. You know, they'll they'll put you on something nice. And uh, uh, another little suggestion I can give for somebody that's looking to get into comic books are um, graphic novels. Or, or uh, trade paperbacks. Trade paperbacks. There is a difference, though. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, there is a difference. The, the graphic novel is is one whole story. You know, it's, sometimes it's broken up into a couple of issues and stuff, but it's one whole story. You know, and it's usually just that one series or story itself. Whereas trade paperbacks are like um, Spider-Man issues, a collection of Spider-Man issues that tell a story arc. But mm -hmm. you know, after you pick up like the best one, I don't know if you would agree to start with, if you can find it, is Ultimate Spider-Man number one. <laughs> I just, you know, yeah, because it was about like, this is a true story, about a month ago, I was at Alter Ego. And our local comic book store. Our local comic book store, check them out on our MySpace page. And you can order stuff from their page as well? Lime, Ohio. Oh, in Lime, Ohio. Hi, we're hi, Lime, Ohio, 45801, that's right. Or 4. Or 4. Or, or oh 05. That's how cool we oh, are. Six. We've got like nine zip codes. That's how cool our town is. I think 04 is, or was it 03 is in Florida or something. Isn't that weird? I, yeah. What's like, how did that happen? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Alter Ego, Lima, Ohio, downtown right next to the QB. And if you're a drinker, across the street from the Roxy. Um, and and on, uh, uh, an older woman, I wouldn't say oldie, but an older woman came in. And me and Kyle, the guy who was working there at the time, were talking. She's wandering around and she... Like we suggested, without even saying anything, she asked us. She goes, "Well, I have a grandson. He loves the Spider-Man movies. He loves the Spider-Man movies." And honestly, who does it? <laughs> Seriously, Tobey Maguire, Dreamy. Uh, <laughs> got weird. K Kristen Dunst, man. Oh, that, she's hot. There, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Just read the cute card. <laughs> uh, but she said, you know, her grand her grandson loved the Spider-Man movies, and she wanted to buy some comic books, but she didn't know where to start. Ultimate. I told her about. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, Volume 1, which was like the first 13... It was like the I think it was like the first 10 or 12, yeah. Yeah, it was like a Spider -Man, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 1, had like the first 12 to 13 issues all collected together. And that was all she really needed to buy because it was, you know, th she didn't have to spend 60 bucks on 13 issues, 20 bucks... 13, 12, 13 books. Yeah. And it told I think, it, Yeah, it was like, what, two to three story arcs in that. Yeah. In that one set, so. And yeah. it was pretty much everything she needed, and I explained to her that if her boy liked the Spider Man movies, that Ultimate Spider Man, the Ultimate line, was pretty much like the Spider Man from the movie where it started the entire story over, but it started over, like, now. It took yeah. place in. You know, Peter Parker's still 15, he's still living at home, he's still in high school, he's still awkward, and the story just, you know, starts from there. Yeah, it's all in current times, as opposed to the regular Spider-Man series, which, as we mentioned before in a previous episode, that, you know, they did restart, but he's still an older Spider-Man, mm -hmm. you know, he's still, like, 30-something, you know, and that appeals to, you know, people more our age, you know, who mm -hmm. grew up with Spider-Man, but this... Ultimate lines for for the younger kids to grab a hold of the Spider-Man line. You know, it, re it retells all the great stories with a more modern twist. You know, and makes things a little more believable. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think it actually shows in the uh, first one, like the the scene, uh, the part from the movie where it actually shows like his skin having the little pieces. Yeah. that explain they actually, how he clings to the wall. Yeah, they actually know? don't even show him in costume for like the first two three issues because, and the writer did such a good job of making. Peter Parker, their character, likable and believable. I'm, what was like five years, I was like 25 at the time, and I'm reading this book that's basically about a 15-year-old, and I'm reading it going, I know what he's talking about. I, you know, I, I went through that, I felt I like that. that, I did that. So, Except uh, for spider biting, I did, but I didn't get any powers. I no, a, I just I got, got a nasty, rash. I got a nasty bump, it was weird. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, graphic novels are uh, the trade paperbacks, you know, like if you if you know, like you like Superman, there's usually a multitude of trade paperbacks that just have a collection of stories that you don't need to know all this history about to to enjoy it. You can pick it up, read it from cover to cover, and walk away fulfilled. Oh yeah, the best one I think was uh, what was it? Red Sun. 
Spy Superman Red Sun, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a three part um, book. I think they've got it collected into into one book now. And it tells a, a, a story as a twist on Superman. What if he landed in Russia instead of in the Americas? And it goes through the yeah. his entire life, almost his entire lifespan, because you know he's Superman. He can live a really long time. But it goes through like his entire lifespan and how the world changed because he was there mm -hmm. on the USSR side. You know, and that that was a good it doesn't job. have anything to do with yeah. any of the comic books that are in continuity or anything like that. It's just like a one shot kind of story, and it's really good. You read it, you learn more about the Superman character because even though it is an alternate universe, you know by reading the other con Superman books and by watching the Superman movies that, you know, he's still, you know, the world's hero. Yeah, he's still the No matter where he heart. ends up being, he's still the world's mm -hmm. hero. And that's just one of those great stories you should definitely pick up. Yeah. But yeah, like, I guess that's my big advice. Uh, like I said for my friend Tasha who wanted to know. Um, like I said, the biggest thing is go to your comic book store. If you've got one, if, if not... There's, Find a there's bookstore online. Online ones. Uh, Alter Ego is one yeah, of the few that there are, are a lot online, online too. And you mm -hmm. can order the stuff and get it sent to your house. Um, yeah, like you know, the best way to get started if you just want to um, pick up a couple books here and there, pick up something like that. It's a one shot. If you're looking to get actually get into comic books, um, Ultimate Spider-Man series stuff like that, because mm -hmm. uh, they they keep collecting the volumes after the issues have been out for a little bit. So if you can catch up with the the novel, you know, the you know, trade paperbacks. <laughs> You can start getting the comic book regularly yeah. too, which is really great. Yeah, it's one I always recommend to anybody who, even if they don't like comic books, I'm like, you should be reading Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. The Ultimate Fantastic Four was really good at the beginning too. Yeah. I like how they explained uh, Reed Richards being able to expand and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and Johnny Storm being able to light himself on fire somehow. Yeah, they, I like how they gave little platelets on yeah. the skin that opens up. It's neat. They it actually like real explained good. it. And one thing about it, uh, especially for the younger kids out there, there are, don't just think that just because the uh, the main core audience for comic book people anymore, it didn't used to be this way. It used to be kid, but now it's more around people our age. Once kids grow up, you know, they, they, they want to keep a hold of what they had as children, and it just has to mature with them. That's yeah. what happened. You know, but there is still stuff out there for kids. Yeah. Uh, I've picked up for my nephew Cole at least a couple times, uh, like Marvel Adventures, which is a collection of, it's not so much just like one specific Marvel title, it, it bounces like Fantastic Four, or maybe a Hulk story, or maybe a Spider-Man story, but it is um, younger age uh, accessible. It's, it's something you could hand to your, your eight or nine year old and not be worried about, you know, too much violence or any kind of sexuality or anything like that. It's very still family friendly, but it's there's still I've read a couple of them. They're still really good books. Yeah, still really good stories. Do uh, the comic book code used to be on every book, but I know that they've kind of uh, shied away from it. They still yeah. have a rating system installed, though, don't they? Yeah, it's usually uh, it's kind of like your video games and your movies. It's usually by the barcode. Um, again, if you're confused, ask your retailer. Mm -hmm. Whether but, this would be appropriate for your kid or not. Yeah. But yet, it'll usually have, just like your video games nowadays, it'll have the little thing in the corner to tell you what age it's appropriate for. That's good. 